everyone, welcome back to Pommy and Oz. I hope we're all doing really well. We're well out of lockdown. I've recovered from my birthday weekend. I'm feeling good. So thank you all for the birthday, love. Much appreciated. If you are new around here, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe. We're smashing the content in the off season. We're trying to keep you in the loop. We're trying to have a bit of fun. So it means absolutely the world to me. So please just turn the likes on, turn the notification bell button on, give it a share. That'll be grouse. Big shout out to the Pominozers, the members of the channel. Remember, there is no obligation, but it does absolutely warm the wee cockles of me bare heart. That's Byron Issa, Timmy P, Alexander Larder, Big Pete Hayward, Lana Owens, Greg Whitaker, Azza James, Rory Foster, Saint Andrew Scott, and the legend Sandra McDonald just joined in the last couple of days. You really are a darling. So you, you guys and girls, honestly, absolute honour, absolute honour. So what we're doing today is we're going to try and have a look at predicting the future. It's a tough one. To, and this is a video request from Adrian Sow. Um, He mentioned it the other day, so I thought I'd crack on it. Of what will Cowton look like under big Michael Voss? Which is a tough question to answer, but we aim to answer it first. So let's have a wee look at the back line. Now, to look at Port's back line, and you can see it's highlighted here. What are they good at? Now, traditionally, when we've looked at Paul's backline, and we know that Voss works heavily with it, I want you to notice here that you can see they open up the wing and they try and funnel. We talked about this against Paul and they had great success. They funnel opposition attacks down the wing. Now, the reason for this is if it forces you out wide, it's the longest method really to go. It allows them to condense and really create a bit of congestion in the centre hoping and leaving that hot spot there for the target. Now, that allows, in their system, a Lira Lira to spread. You can see there that one of the middle, just around the 50, one of the midfielders drops back. Now, under that system, it was really successful because it opens the field up for a Lira Lira to intercept Max. And he was phenomenal at this, this year. Now, if we look at Cowan, we've got two guys that are very proficient at that, but one that I'm really looking at is Liam Jones. Now, what Port have is a traditional small back line, but why it's so good is because of that system. Because if you can control where the ball's going, you can kind of anticipate where it goes. And a lot of teams that play Port, and I go back and watch Carlton versus Port, if you're feeling really high, do it. Do it. Don't, don't do it if you're at low ebb. But you'll see they do this to great effect. They open up the space and naturally when you're under a little bit of cosh, you, you see what's available to you. You take what's on offer. You know, it's the old good player of pool versus bad player of pool. A good player is thinking about the black ball. A bad player is just thinking shot after shot. And they can then anticipate where it goes. And Aaliyah Aaliyah picks it off time and time again. When you look at the makeup of their back line, you can see how it would work at Carlton because we've got superior tolls. So what I would suggest, and this is my inclination, I think he may go with a Kemp in this position and have a Kemp there who can also have enough height from being 195. That makes him the same height as May. And he's also got similar facets to May's in the terms of he uses his body incredibly well against guys that are bigger and stronger than him. And then have um, Liam Jones there at fullback, or he may go the the young route and have a tall and try and mirror what Melbourne do, where Young's is the petty and then Jones is the freebie like a Jake Lever. But I think just for this argument, I would maybe go Kemp. And then what happened there is Kemp is that floater, floater looking to intercept marks because what Alia Alia does is he then attacks the ground. He attacks the ground takes the mark, he's looking to change it. And because of the way they're structured, how they attack is generally they go down the corridor on the left, which kind of suits Carlton's start of play because that is where traditionally our very stronger players work. So I could see a situation where what happens is, is Kemp hits that hot spot, takes the intercept mark, beats the first line, handball to Mr. Adam Saad, and we're off. The injection's off, kick down the flank. Lockie or Blind maybe will play left wing. I'd imagine Adam Cher will pop in there as well occasionally. Um, Jackie Martin. And suddenly they're out and they're into them one-on-ones up the ground looking to exploit on transition. It's going to be a really interesting facet because 1.4 is the kick 
to handball ratio for Port Adelaide. And it's something that you can actually see when Vossi got there and started getting the midfield group, their numbers plummeted. So I do anticipate where we're about 1.75, 1.8. That handball is going to be utilised. And the reason that is, is because of the makeup of the Port players, which is similarly to Carlton. If you look at them, they look for players. They like a couple of players who were strong and one-on-one. -on -one. We've got that. They look for one player particular who is reading the ball well, who's got a decent bit of pace about him, and he looks to beat his man with his interceptability. Aaliyah, Aaliyah, Brody Kemp. You could make an argument for Liam Jones as well in that one. Then you're looking for someone who's a decent kick. Carlton have got that, who's looking for finding space and targets in D50 and is a good stopper of play. They've got Riley Bonner for that. You could look at Liam Stocker for that one. And then they're looking for someone who's an overlap threat, looking with looking to break lines. Now, currently they use Darcy Byrne-Jones. I would say someone that's got accumulation ability, overlap threat, and he's superior to Darcy Byrne-Jones is Adam Saad. Suddenly, Carlton's back line has all the facets that Port has, but in my opinion, better. Our, our defenders, pound for pound, in the key positions are a lot better than theirs. And I think this, you'll see this structure. And I predict you'll see that the corridor is heavily protected and funneled down the flanks. And I think that that is the modern style of play. Melbourne do that. Port do that. What are we atrocious at? The corridor is more open than your nan's house on a weekend. Like, honestly, everyone goes through it. Everyone feasts. Then let's go to the midfield. Now, the midfield, now I've showed you the hit outs here. This is a very important area of Port's game. Now, I want to alert you to the two guys oscillating by the rook. This is the average hit zone. It's the same as Carlton's at the feet of the ruckman. They don't tap it forward or tap it backwards. They look to plonk it. Now, it's very interesting this because Ollie Wines is the one with the line and the square. And the dash line would be a boke, would be a rosy, would be a butters, would be a dersma, radi, radi, ra. The list goes on. And what this is, is the someone attacks the ball. So for in our situation, this would be Cripper. He attacks the ball hard. And the aim of this exercise is to create space for the runner who is intersecting the run to receive the handball. And in that hot zone on the right, get it, as the centre half forward makes a shift to the wing and basically looking for that free hit. Now, he either stays centrally, but this ball will leave looking at the port side of play, ASAP Rocky from the corridor somewhere else. Now, it is a, this again is taken from the handbook of every good side. The handbook of every good side. All good sides now look... Now, this is why I always have this argument. Contested football means nada. The reason is you get the contest, you get it into space. And what they try and do is they create out numbers. That's what they do. Their midfielders as a group work hard. They have to track back. They have to be there. And they help with the forward high press. They play a very high press. And what they're looking for is to contain good users, which will in turn use handballs to create pockets of space and gaps in behind the opposition strong bodies. Getting it out onto the wing and really looking to stretch the opposition's line. And this is where I think, with the midfield group, it makes sense that Hewitt was targeted and Chera. Because Chera's running patterns are out wide. He's not like a Dow that runs through lines. And this was his draft. When you go back to the draft, this is with Dow's plus versus Chera. Chera runs more that way. And I can see Chera and Walsh working this role with Hewitt coming back from in front of the rock and Cripps coming forward and creating that stopper that creates the space for one of them to make that intersect run from the offload handball. And that is exciting because if Cowan can get that brand, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're shithouse at. Because genuinely, under Teague, what would happen is that ball would come down, they all become contested, Dow gets pulled in, Lockie O'Brien gets pulled in from the wing, Noons gets pulled in from the wing. It becomes a shit storm in the middle, and the only way forward is a punt forward into contested territory, into a one-on-one, -on -one, and hoping that Nakai marks, which nine times out of ten he did, but it's pointless because you've got five blokes behind Nakai. What this system does is everyone is going forward, 
I've stopped, offloaded to Walsh. Walsh is going forward. But in turn, players are starting to stream forward. So if the ball is turned over from that entry inside 50, there is now a brick wall behind half forward to say, come at us, come at us, we're set. Are you? Are you set? And that is what they're really efficient at really supremely efficient at. And because Voss was in charge of the midfield group for a long time, he's part of that culture, he's part of that tactics. I expect to see this midfield play that powerful brand. That is, first to the ball, get the ball moving, in movement. Once the ball is in motion, it is tough. And I think this will be the most aesthetical change to your eye. I expect first pre-season, we watch this and we're like, fuck, this midfield works. Less kicking, more handball, more running. It's going to be an exciting thing. This is what excites Pom the most. That does. Now, the forwards. Now, the forwards are really interesting at um, at Port Adelaide. And it's kind of hard to deduce. So what I've done is I've kind of cheated here because we've got a few of the doggies. We've got a doggies guy there that really wrote the book on there. Their, their methodology was kind of in their danger zones. Their danger zone. So if we look at this slide here, this was how the ball pattern moved. And you can see it's a fairly even spread. Now, the reason that that works, where Cowden's was quite one-dimensional to one flank, is makes it hard to read. Makes it hard to read first and foremost. So one thing here is you're looking for your better ball users at half forward. Now, it's interesting because we've got Jack Martin and we've got Jay Soss, who traditionally play that role. And I think that's where they'll play as the kicks inside 50. What that does is they hit targets very well. And then if you've got on the wing a Chera, a Williams floating through there, a Lockie O'Brien who you can debate it, but in space he hits targets, makes this job easier. And it makes it hard for the opposition. Now, what they do is it's interchangeable roles at port. They have a lot of players rotating rotating through. On game day, of the six that do start there at first bounce, they can have up to 12 players floating through these positions, which incidentally is why Carlton have got a lot of kind of dynamic players that can play these multiple roles. And what they do is they never stop moving. And you see that what they do is they traditionally do go for that three-tall system over there. This year, we saw that Giardis and Dixon were heavily used and then they would throw up a Laddams through there and a Marshall through there. Boak would throw up through there. They liked a third type dynamic tall. Guy who's a bit taller than the average bear. And what that allowed them to do was create aerial targets. Now, one person that they used was they were looking at their smalls. Rosie and Gray, who were really good with butters at, at getting the crumbs. And they're looking to create one-on-one -on -one aerial contests. Now, from this situation, you would see Fantasia, Botters, work at the room and look to make that contest. And again, look for easy targets in the smalls, creating space forward to create space for smalls to feed in behind. And that is something that when you look at this Cowan lineup, again, is a reason to be excited because Harry naturally brings players with him. So does Charlie Kerner. Mitch McGovern as well does that ability. And he will be a guy that will be looking for these pockets of space because quite often when you watch Port, they create a mismatch and an outnumber around in the forward 50. And that is it. The thing that is very ferocious about this team is their ability as well to have that midfield line of pressure on entries. They are a real heavy pressure-based forward side. And it's not so much just in the tackle numbers that Port brought forward and the doggies. It's also their ability to look to contain in pressure and put pressure on that tick kicks. Fourth and seventh were Port's forwards in tackles and in top five in pressure numbers. And it comes from that midfield forward press, a very high forward press. And this is the other area I expect to see a huge improvement in, that this midfield and forward group work in tandem to relieve the pressure. And what that does in turn is that's where that funnel starts. They push the halfback flanker to go off by foot, knowing that down the back, they have a system that is creating pockets of space for someone to intercept and boom, we're away. Because that midfield group has to work hard 
forward and back. It's kind of very similar to the Jurgen Klopp method. And it's similarly that Port, we've got a lot of coaches now from Port and Know the Doggies way who were tactical gurus that were looking for that. Their midfield group works hard both ends of the ground in both phases. And that is exciting because this midfield has gone from being a bit lackadaisical to suddenly having to work overtime. And if they get that right, that'll be the huge aesthetic change. So that's what we found out then. Let me know what you're looking forward to. We've had a bit of a play around. We'll go into this a bit more in depth, particularly when we have a bit more evidence. At the moment, it's hypothetical. But this is what I propose we see. Let me know what you're expected to see. And until next time, palm out.